So I've got a message from Yodel saying my package has been delivered. It clearly hadn't. However, the driver has finally turned up. We're looking good, Billy Ray. Go on, the Iceland. Hey. 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 <laughs> Ready? Yeah. You ready to go and yes. learn what you're supposed to be doing? Yeah. What's it about? It's about Hunter Underground. Well, and rainwater, and probably a bit of soil. Oh, right. And some plumbing as well. Promises to be terribly exciting. Oh, bright light. This is very interesting. Honest. I'm receiving a little bit of disapproval for my football shirt. But I went to Iceland earlier this year, as some of you may know. And I loved it there. I thought it was brilliant. And now England are no longer in the Euros. Iceland's my second favourite country left that's still left in it. So why shouldn't I support them? I don't understand why I'm getting static just because they beat England. And it wasn't so much that they beat England. England lost to Iceland. They were awful. So I shouldn't be getting static for wearing this shirt. I'll support Iceland for the rest of the tournament. The end. Hotels, Cockney Fraser of the Week. And as I've just finished my lunch, today's one is New Delhi, because my New Delhi is full, which means belly. Tune in next week for another one. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Still my personal favourite slot of the week, really is. Actually leaving work a little bit early for a change. Not just because I'm a lazy old turn, so, like other people I can mention. But because we need to get our photos done and forms filled out and down the post office for past portage. Normally if I stay, it gets well past time for uh, getting into the post office in time to get all that sort of stuff done. So get to leave a little bit early, but not to do anything exciting. Hey, it's an extra hour and three quarters out of the office. Well, it's an extra two and a bit hours not in the office because that's how long I end up staying most nights anyway. So there we are. Should be fun though. Wonder how many silly faces I can pull before Lucy pokes me in the eye. <laughs> Can't find the forms. Come here and do it. Result, just get it all done here. Photos of the lot. 82 quid. Right. 82 quid. But it is for tea, you think about it, it's eight pounds a year. Eight, yeah. If I could pay for Dora Debbie, that'd be wonderful. It's eight pounds a year. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. So there we are, that was, that was the day Lucy's gone out, so I've been playing PlayStation, so I haven't done a great deal tonight. Yeah, played a bit of Destiny, played a bit of Battlefront. Bit of Assassin's Creed, so yeah, it's been cool, man. I've had a good time. It's getting on for time though, and I need to get this cut and go to bed. So my top five. It's M this week, and so my top five movies. I've been looking forward to this one. It's a pretty basic. It's you know, there's a lot of people who're gonna like most of these films, so it's it's quite straight laced. Sort of a bit run of the mill. Excuse me, my mouth is dry. Better. Right, number five. Page has turned. Number five. I've got Silence of the Lambs. I'm a massive Thomas Harris film. Firm. Thomas Harris fan. I love all, all the Hannibal books. And the film, I think it was Jonathan Demme. I should really look these up. Bear with me. It was Jonathan Demme. Jonathan Demme, director, did a fantastic job of actually getting Thomas's 
book on a film. It's not like it was ever considered an unfilmable movie, but the, just the choice of characters, choice of actors and actresses to play said roles was superb. And of course, Anthony Hopkins just became one of the most frightening on-screen villains of all time. So moving on to number four, Dark Knight. I'm a massive fan of comic book movies and The Dark Knight is the best comic book movie by far. There, it just is. Chris Nolan has just elevated comic book movies to a whole new level. I know the Marvel ones are going off on there, just massive, huge explosions, effects, fun, funny, all that. But The Dark Knight was so rooted in realism, you could honestly believe that if you had enough money and enough resources, you could go and be Batman. Number three. Interstellar. I was blown away by that film. I thought it was absolutely incredible. I thought Matthew McConaughey was absolutely the worst man to pick before I saw the film. After I'd seen it, incredible. What a fantastic job. He is amazing in it. The whole film is just amazing. It's another Chris Nolan film. Second one on the list. Um, it's just incredible. It, my only complaint was maybe it ran a bit long, but it needed to. It, it, everything was there for a reason. So. Can't moan at that, can you? Number two is The Godfather Part Two. Number three, sorry, number one. Number one, Blade Runner. I have adored this film since my dad bought it on video cassette. Actually, I think I bought it for him on video cassette, VHS, for um, a Christmas, because I really wanted it. And that's what I used to do. I used to buy my family films on video that I really wanted to see, because they just lived in the front room and I got to watch them. But that film is incredible. The visuals, the score. Harrison Ford's acting, even though famously he was extremely unhappy making the film, I think he encapsulated everything about Rick Deckard. Just the world weariness and isn't that amazing that you can fit all those kinds of emotions into a replicant. So yeah, that's my top five movies. I've been looking forward to this one because I, I, love, I love movies and stuff. And an honourable mention for Deadpool because it's amazing. It is brilliant. No, but I love comics. I love Deadpool. He's one of my favourite characters. Ryan Reynolds and the team have just captured him perfectly from the opening credits that he clearly hijacked. It's just, it is hilarious. So honourable mention for Deadpool. Um, I'm sure that there are millions of other films that I've left out that come and go into my top five or top ten all the time. But that's how I feel right at this instant. So that's my top five. It does change. It changes quite often. There's, there's other honourable mentions. I mean, I, I, I'm a big fan of older films, stuff like that. I grew up on the likes of um, Highlander. I love the first Highlander. That is a brilliant film. Uh, there's other good films I've seen recently, like uh, The Martian. That was a great film. There's, there's loads. That I could, you could just go on forever and you think, oh, God, what about that one? Oh, what about that one? And you, it'd never end. It would never end. Seven's a great film. Usual Suspects is a brilliant film. American History X, oh, my God. So there's millions. There's millions. But that's my top five as of right now. So thanks for watching. And remember, the best birthdays are those that haven't arrived yet. Ooh, as an afterthought, some of you have asked me um, in the comments, where's Lucy, is she okay? She's fine, she's having a little break from YouTube and she's out tonight, so that's why she's not in the background. She's just having a break from YouTube in literally a few days, maybe a week, and then she'll be back. Um, the doing it every day sort of ruined it for her because it's fine for me, I'll just show you what my daily life is and every now and then tell you stuff that I like. But doing a daily vlog every day about losing weight and slimming and just um, ideas, recipes, stuff like that. To do that every day, you know, hers isn't a lifestyle vlog. It's not like mine. That wasn't the point of it. So she struggled with the daily thing. So she's having a break and then she's going to come back to her old format, action-packed vlogs, two or three times a week, full of content, full of good fun, full of, full of useful stuff. And that's where she's been, so don't worry, she's fine.